Hello. In this short video lecture, I want to talk about the concept of levels of measurement. This video is part of a course um, of introduction of statistics in the social sciences. And when we do statistical analysis, uh, we make lots of measures. We look, record those in variables. And then much of the analysis is looking about relationships, looking at relationships between those variables. And these variables can be recorded in different ways. And we refer to that as levels of measurement. And in this lecture, I want to explain to you what we mean by that um, and why this is important and, and what the different levels of measurement are. So in the social sciences, before we can do any kind of quantitative analysis, we need to make measurements. For example, in a survey, we might ask respondents what their age is, what their occupation is, what their social class is, how they voted in the most recent elections. Or if we look at countries, we might be interested in what the electoral system is, how much foreign aid it receives, what the level is of economic growth, whether or not it's a democracy. We might look at political parties, for example, and be interested in how many members do they have or what is their left-right position. In each of those cases, we have an idea of a particular attribute, a particular feature of a country or of a party or of an individual that we want to observe and that we want to measure and that we then measure for a large number of individuals. Um, so an attribute is a feature of a respondent or a party or a country that we would like to observe um, and, and then we make measures. So then I have introduced the concept of an attribute. So for example, if you look at respondents, but this could be countries or parties or whatever, then each individual respondent will have a particular attribute. So for example, this individual here will have an age attribute and this person happens to be 73 years old. I leave it to you to guess who this is. Now we can then observe the same um, across a set of observations. And so first we talk about two types of variables. The random variable is how we think of the variable, the way this attribute varies across individuals in the entire population. So each individual in the population has an attribute. And this attribute differs between different individuals and, and varies across individuals. And how this varies, that is what we did call the random variable. I will come with a slightly more precise definition in a second, but that's how you can think of a random variable. And then we take a subset of those people, like usually we cannot observe, sometimes we can observe all, for example, when we do country level analysis, we can look at all countries. But when we look at individual voters, we would usually look at a sample. And then we will maybe in a survey, ask a question about age or in a comparative study, look at um, how we measure foreign aid in different countries. And then we record that information and that is called the observed variable. So this is, a set of recorded measurements on specific individuals, individual countries, individual parties, individual organizations, individual respondents, and then a measurement, an observed value for each of those individuals. And that for the remainder of the course, we will always be working with observed variables. When you open a data set, it contains observed variables. But you need to think about how that relates to attributes of individuals and, and how that relates to random variables. Now, I've described a random variable as how a value varies across a population, for example, age. A slightly more precise definition is how we translate a value on an attribute into a number in our data set. So a random variable defines how we translate an attribute into a number that we can record. So a data set in the end only consists of numbers. Here are some examples. Gender, we might decide that we record it as a 1 for males and 2 for females. Age, we might decide that everybody under 18 we code as a 1, everybody between 19 and 40 we record as a 2, everybody between 41 and 65 we record as a 3, and anyone who is older we record code as a 4. Education, we could do in a similar way. We could say 1 for no education, 2 for having finished primary education, 3 for having finished secondary education, four for having finished tertiary education. Or we can, sometimes we can just attach more naturally a number to a particular value. For example, if we look at hourly wages, it makes sense to just express it in the number of euros per hour earned. And we do not have to make this entire scheme of codings. Now you will see that 
these different variables are coded in different ways. Um, some are can have many types of values. Hourly wage can be anything on a very long scale, any particular value. Um, education in this case can only have four possible values. Gender can only have two possible values. And so when we think about how we translate uh, an attribute into a number, we, we can do that in different ways, and these can be more or less limited in terms of uh, the values it can have. And, and that is what we refer to as levels of measurement. So here are the four main levels of measurement that can be further subdivided into two broader categories, categorical levels of measurement and scale level of measurement. Let's, let's start with categorical variables. So categorical variables can have two levels of measurement. They can either be nominal or they can be ordinal. A nominal variable is one that has a fixed number of categories that we can potentially give a label to, and there is no particular order to them. If I ask somebody, what is your party preference? And they can, give, can choose between five different parties or the sixth option is other. Then we have six possible categories. There is no other values other than those six, but there's also no particular order to them. We cannot say that somebody gave a higher answer than somebody else. So we have a nominal variable. An ordinal variable is very similar to a nominal variable. It also has a fixed number of categories. They can also be labeled, but now the ordering does matter. For example, when we looked at education a second ago, you can so that say that somebody with secondary education has more education than somebody with primary education. You don't know how much more, but you know that um, there is a certain order to it. Scale variables, they can be on a uh, wide range of values and they do not have a fixed number of categories. So we can have, sometimes there's a scale from one to 10 or from one to a hundred, but quite often it can be any value. For example, uh, salary in euros or GDP per capita or uh, the temperature, this can be measured on a wide range of values. Um, and so then we call it an, an scale variable. Now the difference between nominal and ordinal is quite important. The difference between interval and ratio is a little bit less important, but technically speaking for scale variables, we do tend to make a difference between those two. And the difference is that with a ratio variable, the zero has a specific meaning and with interval variables, they do not. So for example, if somebody, um, if the temperature in the room here is 20 degrees and in another room it's 10 degrees, it does not really make sense to say that it is twice warmer. Why? Because the zero does not really have such a meaning. But when I talk about the salary and somebody makes 20,000 a year and somebody else 10,000 a year, we can say that this first person makes twice as much. And so the zero has a very specific meaning. So salary is a ratio level variable, temperature and interval level variable. But in practice, in social science statistics, this difference is rarely very important. But when you actually calculate ratios, you need to think about whether that ratio has a substantive meaning or not. So going back to the earlier example, when we look at gender, we have two fixed categories. Um, of course, there is a lot of debate on how one co codes gender, and, and, and this is a bit of a crude definition. Um, but if you want to code it in two categories, we could. Um, and then we have a nominal variable, categories one and two. Um, age here is an ordinal variable. We have four categories. Nobody can be outside of those four categories, but there is a specific order to those categories. We can say that those in category three are older than those in category two. Similar for education. Those in category three and four, they have more education than those in categories one or two. So it's an ordinal variable. And wage then is a scale variable. We can have any value of euros per hour, um, and it can always be, be um, any range can be divided, so, so we can have many possible values. Um, and it's a ratio variable. It's a variable where the zero does make sense. We can say that somebody earns twice as much as somebody else on an hourly basis. Now, these are choices. How you code a particular attribute um, into a number is a choice. We can, we can choose different kind of uh, encodings. So for example, for education, we could have decided instead of coding whether somebody has no education, primary, secondary, or tertiary education, we could have decided that we measure the number of years in education. And then we suddenly have a ratio variable. 
we can say that somebody has twice as, been twice as long in education as somebody else. And similar with age, we could have decided to just record the number of years since birth, which is normally how we think about age. And then we have a ratio level variable rather than an ordinal level variable. So it is a choice of the researcher how we might code it. There's one more category I should add here. So we have the nominal, the ordinal, the interval, and the ratio categories. But there's one kind of special category, and you will often encounter it throughout the course. And this is the dummy variable. Strictly speaking, the dummy variable is a nominal variable. It is a variable with two categories. They could be labeled. There's no inherent ordering to it. Um, but because it's exactly two categories, and because we decide to code label them exactly as 0 and as a 1, they suddenly become much more practical in different contexts. For example, in regression analysis, which we will turn to later, dummy variables are very easy to deal with, can easily be integrated. Um, and, and different statistics we can calculate on interval or ratio variables, we can also calculate on dummy variables, even though we cannot calculate them on other nominal or ordinal variables. So by recoding, by changing a nominal variable into a zero and one two category variable, we suddenly, it becomes a lot more flexible in our statistical analysis. So we could have decided not to code a gender variable that is one for male and two for female, but the variable that we might call female, that where we say zero is males and one is females. It's, for dummy variables, it's usually a good habit to name the variable after the number one category, because that makes reading any statistics later much easier. Right? And similar for age, we could have, instead of the four categories, we could have coded a variable that is called young, where zero is everybody who's older than a certain age, and one is everybody who's younger than a certain age. And then we have a dummy variable. So I think I have used the word recoding already, but this is what we, what we uh, call this. If you turn a variable that is measured in one way into a variable that is measured in another way, um, relabeling the category, rechanging the categories, reducing the categories, uh, we call that recoding. Now, recoding can, one thing that is important is to think about the amount of information that you might have. So recoding really can only be done in one direction. We can turn a scale variable into an ordinal variable. We can turn an ordinal variable into a nominal variable. And we can turn a nominal variable into a dummy variable. Or we can skip some of those steps. But we cannot go the other way around. We cannot turn a nominal variable into a scale level variable. So when you record information, try to go to the higher levels of detail. Try to record at interval or ratio level so that later you can always recode if you want. Whereas if you record something at, a, for example, a dummy variable, there's no way you can then revert back to other levels of measurement. Now, finally, just a quick preview, but you will see these terms returning throughout the course because the kind of statistical analysis you can do depends on the level of measurement. We can calculate the mean of a variable. This only makes sense for an interval ratio or dummy variable, but not for a nominal or ordinal variable. We can calculate the median, which makes sense for an ordinal or interval ratio variable, but not so much for a dummy or nominal. We can make bar charts, which are typical for categorical variables, various. we can make scatter plots when we have scale variables, etc. So different analysis can be done depending on the level of measurement of the variable. And it's therefore crucially important that you learn to de to the, these different terms and learn to recognize them. When you see a variable in a data set, when you see the formulation of a question in a survey, try to think about what is the level of measurement that is obtained here and what kind of analysis can I do with that. Thank you.